Hi, this is Ben Poole for Finextra, and I'm joined by Jerry Norton of CGI. Jerry, thanks for being here. I want to talk to you about the move to real time. Uh, we're expecting that to have big changes for both banks and their customers. I want to start by looking at the possible changes that this might have for banks. What do you think we're going to see here? The way I look at it is that look at this infrastructure as a product for a moment. And real time payments or instant payments or whatever you want to call it is a phenomenal product. In most countries, the form it's going to take, it's going to be able to allow you to move money from one bank account to another. That could be a consumer to a consumer. It could be a consumer to a business or a business to business. But it'll move that money. Uh, it'll move that near instantaneously. It will allow you to uh, do that 24 by 7. It will actually allow that money to be final, as in once it's there, you can take it out. Sure, later on, you can refund it and whatever, but it can't be repudiated. Now, that is a phenomenal product compared to other types of payment infrastructure that exist. So that would allow banks to actually take that product and integrate that into other services and offerings that they could they have, which means that they could then reintermediate themselves in this whole payments value chain and payments debate. You know, here in the UK, you know, just uh, you know, pay, uh, Apple Pay is out there, uh, just been announced. Uh, PayPal is about to be cut out from eBay. So some phenomenal uh, payment organizations and competitors for banks out there. But those organizations are typically sitting on the outside. They're, 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 they're looking at the customer experience. They don't own that core infrastructure. So the whole point about faster payments or immediate payments, real-time payments, is to the banks can take that, pro that, that product and re-intermediate themselves to come up with some innovation which will then allow them to compete against the likes of PayPal or Apple Pay. Mm. And on the other hand, I mean, what effect will this have on bank customers? And you can look at commerce and the effect it will have there yeah, as well. Yeah, and I think that's the thing we should concentrate on. In this debate, everyone's talking about always talking about the infrastructure rather than talking about the benefits to the end customer. Now, if that customer is, let's say, a sole trader, then actually what does that customer want to do? That customer wants to get paid immediately. They probably want to link it to some sort of invoice or request to pay. So why not make a, 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 a customer proposition from a bank which links those two things together so that when the window cleaner comes to, to, comes to get paid, done the job, comes to pay, they say, hi, Ben, uh, you know, here it is on a, a mobile phone. Here's your bill. Do you want me to pay? You say, I send a message to you, you pray. Yes, bam, the money's transferred. So that's for sole traders, fantastic, rather than either getting paid in cash or being paid by some card. But it's equally true for the big businesses, where, if, particularly if they're B2C businesses, where they've got lots of end consumers, then doing ad hoc payments, uh, doing something which allows them to get the cash, cash immediately, their money immediately, rather than later improves their cash flow. It also means, particularly if that is linked to some... Uh, sort of product which can be delivered through the internet, you can link delivery to the payment itself, what's called delivery versus payment. The classic example of that is, is let's say, buying a car. You could buy a car on a Saturday or a Sunday through the garage forecourt. The bank could make a product out of that, which was linked to the payment, which was linked to the, to the actual loan, perhaps, underneath it, which if you're going to borrow some money. And all of that was put together in one package. I could let, 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 let the for, garage forecourt have that, and they could, you could buy your car on a Saturday or a Sunday, something which is actually quite difficult to do at the moment. So from that side of it, it's transformational. But finally, I think from the consumer side as well, most payments are not about, you know, some payments are transfer between two accounts, between me and you, but usually most payments are about buying something. I'm buying something somewhere. And I don't mean here and purchase in a store. I mean out, you know, in the web or whatever. So again, if I can link that payment to something else, there is a really strong customer proposition to be done there. If banks open up their APIs, their their, 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 their sort of technology to the, wo the world, then actually people will be able to innovate by creating apps and all sorts of things to actually link those two things together in ways that today consumers don't get. That is the opportunity for banks to enable that, which will allow customers to use their payment systems rather than somebody else's. And finally, there's a lot of talk in the market about digital currencies right now. What's the potential impact, do you think, of these on payment market infrastructures? Well, if I mean, there's two answers. If, if you're talking about the true digital currency, mm -hmm. then it's dramatic because you've got something like Bitcoin. Bitcoin actually is transferring the value at the same time. It's a true digital equivalent of cash. Uh, so it's anonymous. 
uh, if I paid you the money on Bitcoin, you've got it, I haven't got it, bam. That would completely change the whole world of payments beyond a doubt. But that's why I think we haven't got that stage yet. That would have to be properly regulated by a central bank. You'd end up with a, a bit dollar or a bit sterling if you were going to do that. So I, I think that's profound, but that's not going to happen in the short term. But clearly, the technology aspects of that clearly are of interest as well. Most payment infrastructure infrastructures around the world are looking at that at the moment in some way in order to explore whether they can deliver the same functionality you might have today but in a cheaper way or a more immediate way and therefore the technology is, is what will come first. Excellent. Thanks very much for joining me, Jerry. Thank you.